the Florida Gators and Billy Napier in his first year at the helm in Gainesville. Uh, I am I'm excited to see what he ends up doing because this is not going to look like what Florida fans are used to. That is for sure. Went six and seven last year, just a complete debacle under Dan Mullen. I mean, just ridiculous. The fact that they went six and six in the regular season, their post game win expectancy was over eight wins last year. 8.24 and 3.76. They should have been much better than they ended up being. Uh, this team looked like they did not have a lot of fight left once they got down the home stretch, for sure. Uh, looking at, you know, returning production number 85 in the country, that's not all that important, especially when you've got a new coaching staff coming in. Um, but I look at roster strength, and that's where I get a little confused. Number 18 in roster strength over at CFB Winning Edge. Uh, Number 26 on offense, that's not great, but obviously defense, number 7. For them to be that strong on defense and maybe having a deficiency on the defensive line, I'm curious. I'm curious what this is going to look like and what they're going to try and like how creative can they get with that, right? We'll start off with the offense here. Um, Offense last year, I mean, PP Upper drive number 43, Rushing success rate number forty two. Their passing success rate was number sixteen. Like it, I, you, I can't really figure out a lot. I do know this: their turnover margin was pitiful. The penalties per game awful. Number one fifteen in turnovers. Number uh, one nineteen as far as penalties per game. So that probably put a lot into it. Um, uh, Rob Sale is the offensive coordinator here. He, he was with the New York Giants, but he led some ferocious offenses at Louisiana for Napier before that. So he knows exactly what Napier wants to do. And these guys are not afraid to get ugly, right? To go and just the basic things that you need to be successful on offense. Good offensive linemen, good running backs, and a scheme to get them out into uh, some free space, right? Something along those lines will work regardless of what level of football you are at. Uh, The offensive line does return six guys with 253-plus snaps that bring in right guard Torrance from Louisiana, and he was all sunbelt last year. I mean, just awesome. The running back room looks stocked. There's no proven playmaker other than maybe the Louisiana transfer Johnson. Wide receiver, you got talent with Shorter and Henderson. You brought in Arizona State transfer Ricky Pearson, um, or Pearsall, excuse me. Uh, The offense boils down to the quarterback, Anthony Richardson. Like, Heisman potential, possibly, I think that this could be the perfect offense for him because I don't think that they're going to expect him to throw the ball a ton. I think that in Napier's offense, Richardson will get to show off his legs a lot, and we saw him last year, and he was awesome, absolutely awesome. So we'll see uh, what he's got between his ears for sure going into this season. Defensive coordinators, of course, moving to that side of the ball, Patrick Tony and Sean Spencer. Uh, they were number 104 in takeaways per game last year. Now, normally you can blame that on aggressiveness or the lack thereof, but I don't think that that was the situation with Todd Grantham last year. Um, You know, Louisiana, by the way, was number 24 in that metric, so Louisiana found ways to get turnovers, for sure. Defense was not a talent problem for Florida last year. It It was scheme, it was culture issues under Grantham that I would imagine... You find a way to clear out this year, uh, but we shall see. Again, brand new coaching staff. We're going to see how many guys that are currently on the roster still want to be on the roster at the end of the year, for sure. Plenty of defensive ends, plenty of defensive tackles with experience, um, but maybe a little thin as far as the depth goes. You know, maybe, I don't know. I'm I'm very curious about this because they've, they've got some key guys there, but I don't know... I don't know what to make of it. I don't think the defensive line is going to be great. I think if they end up with some some injuries, they like just maybe one injury, they could really be in some trouble there. Uh, The linebackers should be good, of course, with uh, Brenton Cox, Ventral Miller, etc. The secondary going to be lights out, even even without Elam. Um, Let's see how quickly can they figure out this playbook. I think that these guys make it easy enough, especially early on, uh, that they should be able to play early. Like, I, I've got wins in the first three games for Florida here uh, over Utah and Kentucky. Like, getting those games in Gainesville, massive, massive spot. Uh, they're projected favorites in nine games this year. Six of them are toss-ups, not, not of the favorites, but just overall. Six out of the 12 games are toss-ups where they're either uh, favored or an underdog. 
by one score, eight points. Uh, whether it's less than eight points, et cetera. Hopefully I explained that right to you guys. Uh, keys to the season here. Year one is just setting the tone. So I, I don't know what the expectations really should be. Uh, he's You're building a culture from basically nothing because there was no culture left after Mullen. Uh, it was just at the bottom of the barrel. And even the bottom of the barrel was a bowl team for Florida. So exactly what are the expectations when you are rebuilding from nothing? And the nothing is a bowl. Like, it's ridiculous. Like, are, are fans going to be okay with a different product? Because Billy Napier is not the slinging around the ball yard kind of guy. He is not a Spurrier protege. Uh, he is much more in the vein of Saban and Dabo. And we'll see. We'll see. Uh, what he's done at Louisiana, now maybe with different talent, he opens up the playbook. He opens up and does something different. But obviously, we'll have to wait and see. If Richardson hits in this offense, there's really not a ceiling for him. Uh, he was phenomenal last year in the limited amount that we got to see him. Napier and Sales' offense can be simple enough for his raw talent to just take over. And again, I'm not comparing him to Cam Newton, but we have seen Cam Newton being an example. When you allow a player's raw athletic ability to just take over a game, you take all the thinking out of it. You just make it easy. Like, one decision, two decisions, like however many options, et cetera, just let him go make plays. He can be dynamite in that situation. Defense allowed 26.8 points per game last year. That was number 73 in the country. And they lose stud cornerback Elam and the defensive end Carter. Uh, can the defensive line stay healthy? Because depth is thin. Uh, the secondary does have talent here. What are we going to get from this defense? Like, they are talented. It was not a talent issue. It was a culture issue. Can they turn it over before the season even starts? I doubt it. I think it's something that will be fixed throughout the season. But regardless, there we go. Uh, I've got them at 7-5. and five. I've got uh, I've got Florida at seven and five. I think that stretch where they played Georgia at Texas A and M and then South Carolina uh, after the bye week, I think that's pretty brutal. Now I do have a loss to Florida State here. That one seems very coin flippish to me right now. I you know I like what Norvell's doing at Florida State, but I'm also a pretty big Billy Napier fan. So we will see how that one goes. Um, you know, at seven and five, right on the number. The the projected uh, win total here, not projected, excuse me. The win total is set at seven, juice to the over at minus one thirty. Uh, when you're reestablishing culture, like yeah, there's going to be some bumps and bruises along the way. This is very similar to what I expect from Brian Kelly at LSU. I I expect big big things in the future once they get this season established. Right, you you get the foundation built, and then from there you build on top of it. And I think that that's what we're going to see from Florida. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.